home runs allowed by a Mets pitcher in a single season in the franchise history. And it's only June 24th. <laughs> Matt's got roughed up again in Philadelphia. He gave up seven runs, ten hits, and four in the third innings. He is 0-4 with an 8.1 ERA in six career starts in Philadelphia in that hitter-friendly ballpark. He didn't record an out and allowed eight runs, six of them earned against Philadelphia back on April 16th. The Phillies, of course, have lost 16 out of 22 since May 29th, going from first in the National League East to second place behind Atlanta. Now, in their second straight disaster, Matt Celeste had only four and a third. Seven earned runs, ten hits. Uh, he failed to record an out in his previous start here, so he's just not good. And two-time former Mets outfielder, Jay Bruce put the game away in the seventh inning with a two-run homer against Brooks Pounders. Holy cow. That's a great name, Brooks Pounders. They got pounded. <laughs> the, the Phillies acquired Bruce. We all know that and all that stuff. And, of course, the big piece in the Edwin Diaz, Robinson Cano, was Jared Kalenic. Watch out for this kid. Uh, Harper also, he had two for five, two RBIs. On a night that Philadelphia pounded out 19 hits, they took him off the leadoff spot. Miguel Franco, the two-run homer in the fifth, that ended it for Mats. He barely survived the first inning, so he got lucky. 18 homers overall this season, 10 of which have come in the first inning. The Phillies had lost 16 out of 22 since May 29th, going from first in the National League East to second place, Behind Atlanta, Cesar Hernandez got an RBI single, all right, uh, and that extended the lead. JT Real Muto was 0 for 19, then he hit a triple to center. Okay, Bryce Harper back in the number three spot after batting leadoff uh, for a few games. And Robinson Cano, you can't hide him anymore. You can't hide him anymore. 0 for 5. He left seven runners on base. Brody Van Wagtail's blockbuster offensive train with the Mariners has been one of the worst in Major League Baseball. His batting average is down to two twenty three, and as Cha Cha mentioned, somebody in his league actually dropped him. So it's not good. Cano four for thirty two since uh, he um, came back from the injured list. So it's just bad for the Mets. Now, Pittsburgh, if you want to be, if you're a Pirate fan, the next 26 games is an opportunity. It begins Tuesday in Minute Maid Park in Houston, concludes by the end of July against St. Louis, and um, a losing record will be the icing on the cake as the Pittsburgh may wind up selling certainly one of their outfielders, Marte, Polanco, uh, somebody to make room for uh, the rookies. Uh, so let's see what happens. The Pirates have won six of the last eight after a seven-game losing streak, and uh, Pittsburgh dug a big hole. Then they fell into it, and now they're trying to climb out of it. Probably at the wrong time. The best thing, if I'm a Pirate fan, I just want them to lose, so they'll trade some of these guys and really shake up the team. Uh, Jordan Lyles pitched five and a third in a rehab start. He pitched well for a time being, and you know we'd come back to earth. But he allowed um, five and a third innings, and so he could return this week. And uh, and there you go. The look, the Pirates have been clobbered. Jamison Tyon still back. The whole you know still out. The whole thing. Trevor Williams was out, and of course I know Chacha mentioned Jordan Hicks, uh, the hardest throwing pitcher in baseball. Ninety three percent save percentage was tied for the sixth best among National League relievers, and Hicks could be out for he's out for the rest of the year. It's Tommy John surgery, so don't even think about it. The Cardinals bullpen ranked fifth in the National League with an ERA just over four. Cincinnati's number one, Chicago's number two. Now, here's one thing that may happen. The Cardinals looking to shake it up, and I've heard reports, and you may want to go pick this guy up now before anybody else picks him up. Yarrow Munez may be given a chance to play in center field. Now, Harrison Bader uh, had a chance. His glove is a game-changer. 
but in the short term, he should be a bench weapon with his speed and his late-game defense. He has one hit in his last 29 at-bats, hitting 135 in the last 25 games. Pick up Yaro Munez. That's Yaro. You know how to spell Yaro? That's right. It's Y-A-I-R-O. <laughs> Munez. He's going to get a shot. I can't guarantee he's going to be successful, but... Uh, We'll see. Cha-Cha heading to Myrtle Beach. That's right. Andy and I are going to be out there as well, so not the same time, but we'll see. Maybe Cha-Cha and I could be neighbors. Uh, in the American League, as we move around to the American League, remember Tyler Glass now underwent an MRI yesterday uh, that revealed a, uh, a flexor inflammation. So he's going to be shut down from throwing for three weeks, so let's not expect Tyler Glass now and you know Glass now and Meadows. What a trade that was for Chris Archer. Okay, he's going to be reevaluated. So don't expect Glass, Glass now. In all likelihood, it seems to me he's going to be out for uh, all this, for the rest of the year. Almost has to be rest of the year. If not the rest of the year, most of the year. Okay, don't forget. Arnie coming up right after this broadcast, so stay with us. Uh, over in Baltimore, they didn't play, but Trey Mancini, this is interesting. He's got a 419 batting average in the first inning, and almost half of his 17 home runs have come in that first at bat, right? His slugging percentage is amazing, okay? 887 in the first inning. Now, it's not that he's not. Um, uh, you know, a good hitter in every at bat. He does rank seventh in the American League with a 300 batting, a 305, I think, fifth in OPS. He also ranks highly in, in a lot of categories. But I'll tell you something, nobody pays attention to it, but his first inning antics, unbelievable. Uh, Louis Giolito looking to become the White Sox all star pitcher. Last time they had one was Chris Sale. Jose Quintana was also an all star. So, uh, he'll be going against uh, David Price, who, uh, since he's come back, he's uh, 3-0 and with a 2.97. Johan Moncada, two-run homer against Eduardo Rodriguez. Yonder Alonso, who's been struggling, uh, along with Yolmer Sanchez, back-to-back uh, RBI singles. That was in the seventh inning. Uh, so, look, um, you had Tim Anderson, so his nine-game inning streak come to an end. Worst offensive game of the semi. How could it be any worse? 0 for 5 with four strikeouts, okay? So the Red Sox, now this is what bothers me about baseball. Too many teams, the Red Sox, the Indians, even the Atlanta, I mean, Washington, the Yankees, it's given a choice between crossing the upper luxury tax number or riding with internal options and the proverbial and going out and picking up players. Uh, look, the Red Sox, we all know. Brandon Workman, Ryan Brazier, Matt Barnes, among the 37 relief pitchers used in the major leagues by this referee, Heath Hembry, unbelievable. They decided to go uh, and fight the luxury tax, stay under it. It's not good. I mean, Brazier in April, Cora leaned on him 13 times. And then he gave up five earned runs in four innings to start May. He's out. Joe Kelly didn't do it. Okay? So Workman wasn't even a go-to guy in a big spot. Uh, nothing. I got to tell you, Cleveland did the same thing with their outfield. But now Cleveland has won four straight, nine out of 11, 14 out of 19. They got the best record in the American League, 15 and 6. Makes you wonder, we're all set for a Trevor Bauer trade, but I don't think it's happening. Don't think so. Good morning to Easy Kill. I know I love you. <clears throat> Jason Kipnis, hitting 471, four homers, 14 RBIs in his last nine games, okay? Brad Hand, he was almost a sure thing to go. I still think he is. You'll see, I'm not counting on Cleveland to get any better. They got to trade Brad Hand. They got to trade Carlos Santana. And Bobby Bradley, 
who delivered the RBI double in his first major league at bat after being recalled from AAA on Sunday. He put the Indians up in the sixth with a run-scoring double. Whit Merrifield, homeward for the Royals, bottom of the American League Central. And here's one for you. Jose Ramirez showing signs. That's right. His batting average is up to 217. That's a, how about that, right? Last year he, he was uh, up to 317 or so. Uh, not good, okay? So, uh, Ekipnis homer to start the 10th. The Indians were 1 14 with runners in scoring position. But Kipnis really, um, since striking out at the end of an 0 for 5 game against the Tigers back on June 15th, he has been 16 for 34. Four homers, 14 RBIs. Merrifield, homered in the fourth, singled in the sixth. Brad Keller, three scoreless innings, allowed three hits. But these guys aren't fantasy relevant, okay? Merrifield is. He's, he hit a homer on the second pitch of the fourth inning to give the uh, uh, in uh, Kansas City the first run. But 11 homers this year. One shy of what he hit last year. He's hit nine of his 11 home runs on the road including three homers during the previous road trip up to uh, Minnesota and Seattle. First major leaguer to reach 100 hits this year. He went two for five. He led the majors with 192 hits in 2018. And over his last 13 games, Whit Murrayfield batting 351, five doubles, four homers, 13 runs. Aldoberto Mondesi expected to come off the 10-day injured list on June 29th. Clevenger will throw a full. He Now he's not 100% for Friday. He's got to throw a full-fledged bullpen session today. That's the final hurdle, and then the determination will be made if Clevenger is going to start on Friday. Jake Bowers was scratched from the starting lineup. He rolled his left ankle, so nothing serious, but they're going to keep him out. Luis Rengifo has been the Angels' primary second baseman since his recall. Uh, and then, of course, Andrelton Simmons, grade three ankle sprain. Uh, they want this kid to be, uh, they really want this kid to be a, um, a starter next year. But he may get sent down. He may get more benefit from playing every day in the minor leagues than from trying to rest playing time against uh, Tommy LaStella and David Fletcher. So when Simmons comes back, Ren Gifo more than likely will go down. Okay? And we'll see. And Corey Kluber and Carlos Carrasco will pitch again this season, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. Um, so we'll see what happens. Kluber's going through his throwing motion, uh, wearing a couple of stabilizing straps. He's going to have another MRI this week. And Carrasco was playing catch. That He's receiving treatment, and it's not believed to be life-threatening, his blood condition that he had, which is kept kind of secret. Uh, Aaron Hicks, the Yankees in Toronto. Hicks and Stanton stretched the New York Yankee home run streak to a record 27 games. That's right. CC Sabathia, six innings. Aaron Hicks, three-run homer in the fifth. Stanton in the sixth. So Chapman recorded the final three outs uh, while giving up a run. 22nd save in 24 appearances. And for Vlad, Vladimir Guerrero, okay? (laughs) His sixth three-hit night of the season. The most on the team. The offense has certainly been improving. The Jays put up 14 hits, and they have had 10 or more hits in five consecutive games. Okay? So, Gary L's homer was his 10th of the season. All of them, since he's been was recalled from AAA on, on the 24th. And, uh, and there you go. So, we'll see what happens. Sabathia struck out Vlad in the second inning. And th- the beauty is he also struck out his father 10 times. Okay? Last time was 2011. How about that one? So, the Yankees have homered 26 straight games. 27, whatever it is. And that's uh, Giancarlo Stanton hit a home run with a 111 mile per hour exit velocity. And that's 81st, his 81st, 110 or more miles per hour home run 
tracked by StatCast since 2015. Nobody else has...